<sighs> Here we go. I think that one of the most challenging spiritual practices for Christians is fasting. <laughs> Hi, I'm Matthew Marcoux, and this is Trail Mix with Pure Witness Ministries. Now, to fast or not to fast? Uh, now, that is the question, right? But did you know that for our Lord Jesus, fasting was never an option? In the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus says, And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your father who sees in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. Later in Matthew chapter 9, we read, then the disciples of John came to him, saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast often, but your disciples do not fast? And Jesus said to them, The wedding guests cannot mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them, can they? The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast. Jesus is obviously the bridegroom, and we are his guests, his disciples. And from the time of his ascension to heaven until he returns one day in glory, he has been taken from us. So now is the time to fast. And remember that Jesus said, when you fast, not if you fast or if you ever happen to someday sort of kind of feel like fasting. No, it was when you fast. As disciples of Jesus, fasting is not an option, and that's a good thing because I think as 21st century Christians, we have forgotten the power in fasting. Fasting is an ancient practice that is part of our heritage from Judaism all throughout the centuries of Christianity. Sure, it's become popular, popular, pop, popular, popularized now from like for health reasons and through all the sorts of diets and stuff. And in truth, God designed our bodies to actually benefit from periods of fasting. But if we confuse our reasons for fasting with merely health issues or body image and vanity or prideful put on a show so that the world would know that we are fasting, we lose the, we lose the real power it contains. Fasting has the power to bring down showers of grace from heaven to a world desperately in need of God's grace into the broken areas of our lives, into the brokenness of the world around us. But we need to fast in a way that actually brings about that kind of grace. We hear people talk about fasting from technology, and while there is definitely merit in that, and this can help us grow in self-discipline, it is not the same as fasting from food. It is not as efficacious because it is not denying our bodies the food that is, that is core to our very existence. You know what it's like when you're fasting. You're, you are aware of your fasting all day long as your body tries to resist, but our, body, our bodies can lie to us. Our stomach says, you're going to die, you're going to starve, but we're not. You see, our bodies make good servants, but terrible masters. What keeps us from not continuing to fast is our will, not our hunger. And nothing reveals this disordered relationship between our body and our will as fasting from food. Fasting reminds us that we can be, and in fact, must be in control of our body not our bodies in control of us. And this helps us in the battle with all sorts of sin in other areas in our life as well, which is another area that people can confuse with fasting. Often, you know, we hear 
people talk about fasting from a particular sin. That's not fasting, that's repentance. <laughs> As if it would be fine to go back to the sin where you were done fasting? No. If there's a sin in our life that needs rooting out, then fast. Actually fast from food. This is the ancient practice that has the power to bring about change in our lives. And fasting can reveal some of these areas within us that we need to root out of our lives. For example, have you ever spent a day fasting and realized how angry and irritable you get? Maybe you're not just hangry, but maybe fasting is revealing to you that you have some anger within you that needs to be rooted out. Or I've heard some people suggest that they can't fast because they just fall into temptations of lust. It could be that the fa that fasting is revealing the struggle that you have inside of you with that particular vice. Often what's being revealed through fasting are the attachments that need uprooting. And if we persevere with our fasting and prayer, the Lord will deliver us from these vices. After all, it was Jesus who told his disciples that when they asked why they couldn't cast out a certain demon, that some demons can only be cast out through prayer and fasting. So never underestimate the power of fasting in your life to deliver you from sin, to bring showers of grace into the lives of your loved ones and to help our world to find its way back to God. Fasting is one of the most important spiritual practices for Christians to take up. No wonder Satan keeps offering us so many excuses not to do it. If you don't already fast regularly, um, try adding one day a week into your life where you actually fast from food and persevere with that commitment. If you mess up and accidentally find yourself eating a nice juicy steak partway through the day, you know, don't throw in the towel and give up on fasting altogether. Wouldn't Satan just love to see us give up? Just start all over again with your next fast. And with each effort you make, you will grow in self-discipline and self-denial, both virtues that we all need to put into practice in our lives. And you will draw on the heavenly graces that make you able to do this because you are able to do this. Jesus would not have expected us, his followers, to fast if, we were, if it were beyond our ability. So I encourage you and challenge you to take up fasting regularly and know that you will probably and always find a reason as to why you shouldn't or can't and why do I say that? Because I do that a lot for myself. I find an excuse, a reason as to why I shouldn't or can't. But remember that this is something that Jesus expects of his followers. And that's someone that I'm striving to be. And hopefully, you are too. I'm Matthew Marcou, and this is Trail Mix with Pure Witness Ministries. See you in the next one. God bless.